Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Um, we're going to now go through the stages of creating the first CAM setup and then starting to have a look at different CAM cycles which will lead you to a bit of an investigation hopefully into the function of each and all of them and uh, how you might use them. So you should have hopefully gotten uh, so far your initial setup complete. We're now going to go up to CAM, there's a tab up the top here and we're going to go to setup. Now the setup option allows us to create uh, the parameters for manufacturing, um, such as what material we're using, where the things we need to watch out for so we don't hit them with the, the drill bit, i.e. the fixtures because they're made out of metal and the drill bits are designed for wood, and then also specify the way we're going to be um, removing material and all the rest. So to start with what we're going to do is just uh, kind of have a look at the way that we operate the setup. On the left here we've got our regular browser and the browser now has a different look to it. It's uh, all to do with cam and all to do with setup. To get back to model you just select model back here but we're not going to do that. So we are milling. Okay there's a difference between milling and turning there as you may have seen and we're going to select a few things like the work coordinate system, the origin, stock, model and all the rest. So to select the uh, model orientation we're going to go select Z and uh, Y planes. That's what I prefer to do. We're going to start with the Z axis. Now, as you should know from our CNC, the Denver 2600 Pro, the um, Z axis is vertically up. And as we're doing sideways manufacturing, that would be like so. It would be this orientation here. However, this is now pointing down to the bottom of our car, and that's not correct. It needs to be up, so we're going to flip it. Uh, the next is the Y axis. The Y axis moves along this direction of our um, design in and along the, from top to bottom of the vehicle and that's what it looks like there but of course again we need to flip the axis because positive is the other side so Z then should hopefully be pointing up Y towards the top of the car and X backwards and this is how we do the first left hand side the origin we need to select a model origin and then we need to select the model which is easy enough to do it automatically does that option for you to click next you just need to hover over until you get it now that's the stock as you should know that is if I can just hover right the model just there. Selecting that should make it go highlighted blue. It zooms quite a lot down with the stock. Uh, we're going to set that up probably in a minute. Now we're going to do fixtures. So we tick the box and we select fixture one and two. Very important. Going through we're going to select our stock and rather than the mode we're going to go from solid and we're just going to select the balsa block there. So that's our stock now um, which is perfect post-processing the program name, we're going to go cam, uh, comment should be your name, uh, first name dot last name. Uh, work coordinate offsets, we're leaving that alone, and we're ready to go, we just click OK now. OK, the next thing that I want to make sure that we've got done is our tooling library. OK, now setup one, we're going to rename to be setup left, like so, and then we're going to go so once we select tool library here, what we need to do is create our own custom tool. So we select by type, we expand that um, folder and we find the ball mill folder. You want to scroll down until you find 6mm ball mills, like so. Um, this should obviously be under metrics, so they should be millimeters. Just scroll through a little bit until we find one that kind of looks appropriate. doesn't really matter too much. I'm going to go for this one here. I'm going to select OK. Oops, sorry, I needed to edit that. Um, once you've found it again, that'll do. We'll go edit. Uh, we'll now just um, modify the, the settings of this cutter. So for example, the flute length is 37. Uh, the shoulder length is 40. The shaft angle stays at 6. The body length uh, probably goes to about 45. The overall length is about 75. That's fine. Diameter stays in 6. Uh, general, I'll call it number 1. Description, we'll go F1, cutter. Uh, the holder, we'll select a holder, uh, we'll go to holder library, we'll find the BT30 blank and select that one, that's fine. Um, we'll go to shaft and we'll leave that alone. Okay, now that we've done that we'll go to speeds and feeds. Now here's where we need to modify something very carefully. It needs to be 23,000 revolutions per minute, that's how fast our cutter rotates. The cutting feed uh, should be about 3,500, the lead-in feed rate will be 4,000 the lead out feed rate of 4000, the ramp feed rate. Um, uh, the ramp feed rate will leave at 3500. Millimeters. The plunge of 1000 is uh, probably a little bit excessive. Let's go down to about 600. 
so it's quite a lot less um, just because you don't want it to just ra rapidly drop down and that's it we're going to click OK um, we're going to go OK now you'll find it here number one six millimeter f1 color click OK all right we're done so what that means now is that when we create our codes we can select the tool and we can go to um, by type six mil bore mill um, so ball mills, and if we scroll down, we'll find one that's got the F1 cutter description attached to it. And when we select that, the settings and it appears. So all of the spindle speeds, revolution speed in, feed outs are perfectly calculated for us, okay? Which you should know why they're so important, having gone through our lessons about CNC control and spindle speeds. All right, well done for getting this far. That's the setup done. Um, if you haven't already, um, you probably will be doing a short task on having a look at what different um, 3D milling and 2D milling um, canned cycles we've got. So, you know, a facing cycle says here produces quick piling facing to prepare raw stock for machining, horizontally automatic detects all the flat areas of the part. You know, you're meant to be researching a few of those and picking a couple and um, to use on your CNC. Um, obviously, I'll be specifying exactly which ones you have to use because we don't have time to um, make two overly complicated codes. So, it'll be interesting to see what you find out because you have to be able to explain some of the research about it in your um, photos. All right, that'll do for today. I will see you in the next video. Well done.